Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. So today's lecture is about lead lag controller, a continuation from the previous lecture. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do this uh, example again. Um, we have GP which is equals to 1 over S plus 1, S plus 5. So we want to design the lead lag controller. So basically, the lead light controller design is very similar to the PID controller design. And let's say we want to improve the system responses uh, that give uh, the TP less than 1 second, steady state error less than 5% for a step input while keeping the percent overshoot below 10%. So the uh, procedure, the design procedure for the lead light controller is as follows. Uh, the first thing is we choose the desired closed loop pulse. So from the uh, TP that we want is one, less than one second. So we have done the previous examples. Then uh, we know that at S equals to negative three plus minus J three, it gives us the TP which is about one second. And at a five percent overshoot, the zeta is about. 0 0.707 um, again uh, we expect of uh, these initial targets will be regard degraded after introducing uh, zeros and poles of lead light controller to the system so for a lead light controller we have the, uh, the controller GC equals to KC S plus ZE S plus ZA over S plus PE S plus PA where we have ZE here basically this is a zero uh, for the uh, lead controller and then we have uh, A ZA is a, uh, zero for the lead controller similarly we have PE which is uh, our pole for the uh, lead controller and we have PA which is uh, stands for uh, Pools for the lag controller. Okay, uh, let's say we select uh, ZE equals to 5 to cancel the plant largest pole and we select uh, ZA equals to 1 to cancel the smallest pole of the plant. And then we select a PA equals to 0 0.1 to approximate the effect of PI. So in case you don't remember, please uh, go back to the previous lecture uh, individually for the lead controller and light controller to understand uh, of this uh, selection. So at uh, S equals to negative 3 plus minus J3, uh, we know that at the, uh, the point at the closed loop poles will result in uh, 180 degree of angle so we can calculate the PE using the formula the summation uh, of 0 minus a summation of poles and the summation of angle uh, 0 angles minus summation of uh, 0 uh, sorry uh, pole angles which is equal to negative 180 degree so since we have cancelled out uh, so again, we have our controller here, GC, we select our ZE, sorry, we selected our ZE equals to, ZE equals to 5. So we have S plus 5 and S plus 1. And then we selected our uh, PE sorry PA equals to S plus PE and we selected S plus 0 0.1 so we can cancel out uh, the S plus 1 and S plus 5 of the plan so what's left only we have uh, the uh, resultant con uh, G which is equals to KC over S plus PE uh, over uh, KC over S plus PE S plus 0 0.1 so we can calculate the angle only 
based on these two uh, poles, which is S plus PE and S plus 0 0.1. And then we want to find uh, the angle of PE, so we rearrange uh, the equation so that we will find the angle of uh, PE equals to 45.97 degree. So from the angle, we can calculate the value of PE actually. So not PA. So we will get the PE value equals to 5.9. And then uh, the next step is we calculate the KC from the uh, resultant controller. Uh, GC multiplied by uh, GP. So we have this S plus 0 0.1 uh, absolute value and we uh, we multiply with the absolute value of, of S plus 5.9 at uh, S equals to negative 3 plus J3 and that will result in 17.4 of gain. So this is the resultant controller. So uh, we can then uh, find the uh, G which is equals to GP multiplied by GC and then we will get the value since we can cancel out for this one and this one we will get 17.4 over S plus 0 0.1 S plus 5.9 okay uh, F Nine, so we can find the KP since the uh, test signal is an input signal. We find the static error constant uh, for position and KP, and then we can put it a limit as approaching zero uh, using the final value theorem, as we have learned in the steady state error uh, lecture. And then we can find the value of KP equals to 29.5 and we can then calculate the steady state error by taking 1 over 1 plus KP which is equals to 3.28% uh, which is less than 5%. And the next things to do is we can plot it uh, using MATLAB. Okay, let's uh, demonstrate our example using MATLAB. So we have our GP here, and then we have decided uh, the uh, S value, uh, ZE value, ZA, and PA. So we can run it, and then we find the angle for the uh, PE uh, using uh, S plus uh, PE and S plus PA and then we can find it so we find the angle in degree is 45.97 as we have done it in the lecture notes and then we can find the value of PE which is in this case we have 5.9 and then we can put it into the initial value for our uh, GC without including KC yet so we can have uh, S plus 5, S plus 1 over S plus 5.9, S plus 0 0.1. So we can take uh, the uh, uh, simplified value after uh, considering the cancellation of pole and zero. Uh, we take uh, this, uh, we have uh, this one. Okay, 1 over S plus 5, S plus 5.9 and S plus 0 0.1. So then we can calculate the value of KC. So we can uh, use the absolute value uh, of the uh, resultant controller here, G, and we can find KC which is equal to 17.4. And then we can put it into the GC. Uh, we can get the complete GC 17.41 uh, S plus 5, S plus 1 over S plus 5.9, S plus 0 0.1. And then, uh, since we have uh, our KC, we can find again the resultant uh, 
uh, value of GP multiplied by GC and uh, we can find the KP okay and steady state error using the limit final value theorem and we also can do that in MATLAB using this code and then you can run it and what we get here is actually we will have the steady state error which is equals to a 3.28 percent and then we can input into the CISO tool the value of GP and GC and then we can run it and what we have here we use what uh, we will get uh, something like this we have the root locus here and then we get the initial value for the compensator as uh, we have input it into the code uh, 17.41 is the KC and then this is the GC that we have calculated before and what we have here is that we have the closed loop transfer function the resultant step uh, if, uh, output for this uh, G value is 4.32% uh, at time 1.0 seconds so we can further improve this uh, response by uh, what we want is we want the percent overshoot that is less than 10% so we can simply set the uh, design to 10% and we can see uh, the ray of 10% value so that yeah, we, maybe we just drag uh, a little bit down uh, to get uh, the value might be uh, wait for a while okay what we have here is okay, sorry for the delay uh, we might increase when we track down we will have a overshoot that is less than the initial one maybe we can try 18 so we put 18 as the KC what we have here maybe we can try 21 uh, that will result in 7 maybe 25 probably so yeah, so how about 27, okay, maybe 26, so, all right. so maybe 25.5 is, is the best one to achieve 10% overshoot, yeah, yeah. let's see 25.1 okay what we have here when we put it 25.1 we have here the response is 9.96 uh, percent at time 0 0.7768 second so we have achieved the uh, two uh, design requirement the percent overshoot and TP so how about the uh, Steady the error. So we wish to have less than 5%. So let's say we have here uh, 25.1. So we can try to do that to find the steady state error after we set the new KC. And then we can get about 2.3%, which is less than 5%. So we have successfully uh fulfill all the design requirements so we go back to the lecture notes and we can see here so uh, you can refer to the lecture notes so we have achieved uh, all the design requirements and that's it uh, for the uh, leak lag controller so I hope you understand what uh, we need to do uh, to find 
uh, how 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 to obtain all the design requirements all right till then uh, i leave you for now and see you in next video assalamualaikum and goodbye